evening, Church of the Living God. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus and the assertion that our Lord is King of all creation. It is in times like this I have found it more than necessary that the Church is to offer bread to those that are around it. The Church is to offer real bread, the bread of life, which is the Word of God. Too many a time that we find ourselves around the church and the church is not feeding the people. Now I have realized that the gospel of eschatology in itself, based in soteriology, has understood that people are supposed to be saved. People are supposed to access their power. People are supposed to access knowledge of God before anything else. It is easier to have faith when you have knowledge. Faith is strong belief. It is more than belief. It is actionable belief. Because you have an awareness of who God is. Now, I want us to quickly get to this assertion. In Genesis, when we get there, we find God and the Spirit hovering around nothingness. We find nothingness there. And the first thing that happens there is God speaks things into existence. So the first identity or the first action that we see God is a motion of spirit. And after that, it is utterance. Utterance, words, he spoke the angels into existence. There is power in the word of God. Now, I want you to understand something. When we move and go to Samuel, it is the word of the Lord that comes and says, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel hears this word and he goes and identifies it to be Eli. He thinks it's Eli. He comes again and comes again until they get the understanding that the word is coming from God. Now, this gives us a clear theological advantage and tells us that two entities can speak. That is the human and God. Because at this time, he is thinking it's Eli. He thinks it's Eli who's talking to him, but it is actually God. So God and man can speak. That's why God says, speak to that situation. Speak to that rock. Speak to your situation. He says in Matthew 24 that prophets will come and they will say, say, they will speak. Mountain, go over there and it will go there. There is power in the word. It is in Matthew 4 again. Then he comes and he says, man shall not live on bread alone. He then says the sustaining quality of everything that is around us is the word of God. Without the word of God, we are left bamboozled by fake preachers, bamboozled by fake prophets. Now we have started a remedy that is going to be endeavoring to feed the church. And it's going to come to you every Wednesday, teaching you the word of God, giving you the breath of life. Tonight is the conversation starter. The question is, is the church still teaching the word of God? Jesus came to the church and the church killed him. He came to Simon's house. They fed him food and they, they, they killed him. They did not know him. Pontius Pilate looked at him and said, what is truth? Yet truth was standing right in front of him. So we are therefore right to ascertain as the church is the body of Christ that we have made mistakes before. Jesus came to the church and we did not know God because we have our own way of understanding who God is. We think God should come from a certain way. We think blessings should come a certain way. By doing so, are we not limiting God? God can come in any way that he wants to come. And we find this in the session even when in Ezekiel. When Ezekiel the prophet sees the will in a will, he sees a motionless yet stationary being. He sees a man with an ego face, with a lion face. He sees all these abstractions and he says to himself, who is this man? He does not understand what is going on. But we want to put God and quantify him and say God does come this way. God says everything works together for good. There are established governments with the dictators that God has put in power. We find this assertion also when God says that Nebuchadnezzar, I put him into power. He says he is my servant. Him he would, he would slay. Him he would, he would rise up. Him he would, he would put down. That is the description of a murderer. A person who had not understood the Bible, a person who had not accepted all these things. Now I move you further. To a conversation that should open your mind. Never limit God. God can use anyone. 
Now I want you to understand something. The day that the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar entered Jerusalem, he went into the temple, touched the pieces of the temple, and walked out. The Jewish people, when they saw the raiders coming in, they said these people are going to die in there. Because they'd seen many a priest who are not qualified by blood of the Levite, have gone in there and failed to come out because of the glory of God. But here they see a beer drinking, a wine gorging, a womanizer, a murderer of the highest note. He walks into the temple and walks out with the pieces of the temple. Why? Because the world looks, the church looks from the outside and says, that does not look like a Christian. That can't be a Christian. That is not a Christian. God should come this way. I ask you tonight, in a clear session to your mind, and a question that says, do we really know God? Can we quantify God? We cannot. God will come in whatever manner he wants. Good night and be blessed.